All right, so on this video, we're going to talk uh, about the MAC address in some detail. Um, it's really important to understand what a MAC address is and how it's formatted and uh, what it's used for. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about hex in this video, but there's another video that's going to give a little bit more specifics on hex, the hexadecimal numbering system. So watch that video. I'm going to talk about it a little bit, but not a whole lot. So uh, let's get into it, the MAC address. So the MAC address is a, another really important address. Um, it's a layer two address. Uh, so we talked about the IP address in another video and how it's a layer three address. Um, so a MAC address lives in layer two of the OSI model. Uh, so let's talk about a few specifics about it. One, uh, MAC stands for Media Access Control. That's right. So if you're wondering what that acronym means, that's it, Media Access Control Address. Um, it's a 48-bit uh, long address, 48 bits long. Um, so the IP address was 32 bits. So this address is actually a little longer. So a few more options. Um, you know, we've run out of those IPv4 addresses um, because uh, of the fact that there's so many devices out there using them. But uh, they haven't had that word from uh, the MAC address yet. Um, it's expressed by 12 hexadecimal numbers. Uh, each hex number can be expressed with four bits. So let's talk about that real quick. So here's an example of an IPv, I mean, excuse me, of a MAC address. And each one of these symbols here, they are actually hex numbers. Um, so um, we'll talk about hex a little bit uh, in a few minutes. And uh, so if I were to go and change each of these hex numbers into um, binary, uh, each one would be expressed with four bits. So E is one, 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 zero. Then the zero would be four zeros. And then again, that zero is four zeros. Pretty exciting so far. And then the number six, right? So it would be zero, one, one, zero, right? And then another E and so on. So again, each one of these hex numbers can be represented by four binary uh, bits, or we call that a nibble in the old days, and uh, uh, you don't hear that much anymore. And uh, so sets of two hex numbers separated by hyphens, right? So uh, so this format is actually the correct format, which you're seeing here on the screen. Um, I have seen some um, documentation using periods and even full colons, which um, I guess you can do, um, but um, the correct way to express um, a MAC address is with hyphens. So uh, so that's that's the way you should see it. Uh, if you do a ipconfig-all uh, on your computer, it's going to be expressed with the hyphens. Okay, The first six hex numbers, or the first 24 bits, uh, represent the organizational unique identifier. Right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, right there. These first six hex numbers, or 24 bits, uh, are are the um, manufacturer of the device itself. So this is a NIC card right here, right? This is a NIC card. And this NIC card has a MAC address that has been uh, programmed into it. We'll talk about more of that in a second. And um, whoever made this card, let's just say that 3Com made this card, right? 3Com. So this first, uh, these first six numbers would represent the manufacturer. The rest would be a random set of numbers to make it unique. And when I say unique, um, let me just say real quick that we're right there. Unique. So the MAC address is a unique identifier that is burnt into the NIC card. So it's programmed in this NIC card. We're going to talk about that more in a second. Unique meaning no two NICs can have the same MAC address on the planet. Okay, so it's very important that you know that that these MAC addresses are unique um, to uh, on the whole planet. So no two NIC cards will have the same MAC address. Another thing that you need to know about MAC addresses um, is they have different names, okay? So we also call the MAC address an Ethernet address or a physical address, hardware address, or a burned-in address, okay? So those are your other terms for it. So you'll be maybe on the test, you may see it used, uh, the terms be used differently. Um, so uh, the one I want to talk about is burned-in or physical. So I'm going to talk about those two. The reason why we use that terminology is because this card, this NIC card, when it was manufactured, this address was actually um, programmed into what is called a double EEPROM, which stands for Electrically Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. That's a mouthful there. But the, uh, double, the double EEPROM it means that once it's burnt in, it doesn't change. Even if you take the electricity off the device, uh, it doesn't uh, change that address. So um, so those are some just over uh, some speci uh, an overview specifics about the uh, about a MAC address. Um, it's important to know that for the test because um, the uh, the test is going to ask you how long it is and things like that. So make sure you know that. 
Another thing real quick I want to cover is how do you see your computer's MAC address, right? So if you go into your command prompt and type in ipconfig, and then there's a space there, make sure you put a space, right? And then all, you'll get this, this will display on the screen, and right here it says physical address. And if you look down here, there is your MAC address. Again, separated by those hyphens, um, if you count them, it's 12. So that is a official true MAC address. Okay, Ooh, there's some writing on here already. Let's get rid of that. Oh, excuse me. Oh, it went away anyway. There you go. It's weird. Okay, so I know how that showed up. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the MAC address. The MAC address, again, is a layer 2 address, right? It is used for local delivery of data. And if you look right here, I kind of took this off uh, Google real quick. Layer 2, local network host delivery. So um, that's the responsibility of the MAC address. It is using the frame header. So remember, if we draw a piece of data real quick, we have data, the TCP header, the IP header, and then the uh, frame header. In the frame header is where we are going to have our sending and destination MAC addresses, right? So it's part of the frame header. And uh, so again, that's why it's a layer two address, right? Uh, another thing about the MAC addresses you have to know is you have to make sure that when you take the test, they may have questions or um, the certification just if you, they may have questions and they'll say, is this a valid MAC address? And what they'll do is they'll be looking to see if you really understand the, the, the numbers used in a MAC address, the hex number. So real quick, I'm going to make a video on hexadecimal. So watch that video later. But a real quick overview. Hex is a, is a numbering system with 16 characters, right, from 0 to F. Right, so these are all valid hex symbols um, that are in the hexadecimal numbering system. So notice I even put this in red. There, these are the only characters that can be used to uh, to express a MAC address. So notice um, down here I have a MAC address, right, and that is a valid MAC address. All those symbols that are in there are in that list above. And then over here I put another MAC address, and these two symbols obviously are illegal. There is no G and H in hexadecimal. So it's important to be able to see a, hex, a MAC address and say if it's valid or not for the test. So these would be two examples. One is good and the other is not. Okay, let's talk about how a MAC address works. So remember, uh, we mentioned that it is a local, um, locally uh, address used locally on my segment. So, so this would be my local segment over here, and this over here is the internet. Right, so that's outside my network. And um, so what I've done is I'm going to explain how a switch, so that's a switch right here, right? How it learns, <coughs> excuse me, how it learns MAC addresses and then how computers send data uh, with MAC addresses. So here we go. So let's start with a quickie uh, example. So let's just say this computer here wants to talk to this computer here, okay? Um, so let's say I'm going to ping it. So I'm going to type in ping, right? I'm going to use the ping command in my DOS prompt, and I'm going to use this address right here, ping 192.168.10.40. So I put in that address and I hit enter, right? Well, uh, inside the switch is a MAC table, right? We call this the MAC table. And it has two columns, a port column and a MAC address column. Now let's just say this switch has never been, it hasn't been turned on yet. It's, it's, it's just been turned on, so it hasn't been working yet. It doesn't know anything on its MAC table yet. Since this computer has never since this computer has never communicated with this computer, it doesn't know its MAC address. But it, I just told it the address, the IP address, to ping. So now what it's going to do is ARP, right? It will ARP. Address Resolution Protocol. And what it's going to do is it's going to go, "Hey, 192.168.10.40, can you please send me your MAC address?" This request is a broadcast, right? It's a broadcast protocol, and what it's going to do is send that broadcast into this port one. So on port one, this switch will put this MAC address. I'm going to shorten and just put 57 because there's too much to draw. Okay. So it enters into the switch. Because it's a broadcast, this switch is going to flood out every port except the one it came in. So it's going to flood this way and it floods this way. Well, so this device, this router here will hear it, but because it's not that IP address I'm looking for, right, it doesn't respond back. Well, this is the IP address I'm looking for, and this one says, yes, no problem, I will send you my MAC address. So now, this device sends the MAC address back, right? So when it enters into this switch, this switch now learns this MAC address, or the, essentially the whole thing, but I'm just going to put 1F here, right? And then the data goes straight back to the computer. 
Notice how it didn't flood again, right? It didn't flood because this switch knows the MAC address of the ports, port um, one already. So it didn't have to flood that out, okay? So now, once it has its MAC address, the two computers can talk to each other, no problem, right? So that's how a MAC address is used in a local segment. And then I'm gonna do a real quick, one more explanation. If you look at the IP address video, you'll see how a MAC address, how, an I, how a computer with an IP address realizes that it's trying to communicate with the computer, not in its network, okay? So watch that video for a little bit more information on that. But real quick, this computer wants to talk to this computer. These two computers are not in the same network, right? So this computer knows that it wants to communicate with the computer not in its network. So what it's going to do, it will ARP its default gateway, okay? So it's gonna say, hey, 192.168.10.1, can you please send me your MAC address, right? So notice that the table is still missing one more slot. So, so this device is your default gateway, actually default gateway is right here, it's inside your network. And uh, so my so it sends the request, this ARP request, hey, send, default gateway, send me a MAC. It comes into the switch because it's a ARP, it's a broadcast, so it floods out all ports again. Remember, ARPs always flood out a switch. And then the router will send its MAC address back to the computer. Now it, right, and now the switch learns on port three is, I'm just gonna put A1, but it learns its MAC address. And now this switch is, its uh, MAC address is completely full of everything that's connected to it. This is called converged, right? And now, um, it, then once this computer has the uh, MAC address of its default gateway, I'm gonna erase this because it's getting a little bit ugly. Once it learns that, it sends the data for, so again, we were requesting this web page, right? So my computer was requesting this web page. So it sends the request here, and then the router takes it from there and gets it on its way to find this web server. So again, the MAC address, everything we've talked about has been local to my segment. So let me ask this magic question. Can this computer, will this computer ever know this computer's MAC address? And the answer of course is no. Because MAC addresses are only locally used to communicate directly from device to device in a segment. Uh, IP addresses are used to get to other networks. Okay, so that's the uh, video on MAC addresses and a uh, little short video. Make sure you understand how it's created, how it's, uh, what it's, how it's uses, its different names, making sure you can identify a, a um, format. Okay, so that's it. Uh, make, make sure you take the quiz after the video and move on to the next video.